In this video, we'll see how to use more Wireshark filters and capture a username and a password. And also we'll see how to see the cookies of a person if they're already logged into a service and they didn't enter their username and password. So I'm gonna start a new capture. I'm gonna close this without saving. And I'm gonna remove this filter from here. And I'm just gonna go to Hotmail. And I'm gonna log in with my username, which is Zaid at hotmail.com. And then I'm gonna put the password, which is gonna be a random password, but it's gonna be captured. So we're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, and enter. And as you can see now, we managed to capture traffic. I'm gonna stop this. And I'm going to look for HTTP. And we're gonna look for post requests. So we can see here we have get, these packets are sending get requests. And we're gonna look for something that's sending a post request. And you can see now this is the first one sending a post request. So it's being sent from the target, from the target computer to the server. So let's double click this and see what's inside it. And looking right here, you'll see that this was sent to login.live.com, but we can't see any username and passwords in this one. So I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna look for the next post packet, which is this one. Again, double click it. And let's see what's inside it. Now, if we come here to the HTML form, you'll see that we have the login, which is zaid at hotmail.com. So this is what we entered. And you can also see the password, which was sent as 123456. So again, man in the middle left was doing this very easy for us and it was showing us the information easily. It was filtering the important information for us. But right here, we can see that we can actually capture anything that's sent on the network and we can see it using Wireshark. Another thing that you can do is you can actually search through these whole packets. So uh, you can just go to edit and then go to find packet. And right here you can select if you want to search in the packet list, which is just this or in the packet details. So we're actually going to search in the packet details. We're going to keep this narrow and wide. And right here, I've set this to string so you can actually put a display filter if you want but I'm searching for a string, which is just a normal text. And if we search for Zaid, it will actually go straight to the packet, this packet, which contains my username. And again, if we just look at it here or we can double click it, whichever is easier for you, you can see that we managed to capture the username, which is Zaid at hotmail.com. Now you can do find next and you'll get the next one find next and again it will find the next one which actually had my password in it so again the search right here is really useful function that will allow you to navigate through all of these packets and find what you're looking for now let's start a new capture and see if we can actually capture the cookies so i'm going to again continue without saving i'm going to go to my windows machine and i'm going to go to daily motion which i already logged in before And as you can see, it's not asking me to log in because I've already logged in and it already has a name here. So I'm just gonna go to this channel. Now it's just a fake channel that I created just for this lecture. Now, if we go to our Wireshark right here and stop the capture and look for, instead of HTTP, we're gonna look for HTTP.cookie. So if we go down, you can see that right here, the person got to their homepage, which is that's, that's the username, the fake username that I had. Now, if we go to the post request before that, and look at the hypertext, you can see the cookie that was sent to authenticate that person. So if you use, uh, you can just download a plugin for your browser and 
inject these cookies into that browser, you'll be able to log in to that username, to that account without using the password, the same way that the user entered. So this is the same that what we did with ferret and hamster. Again, I'm just doing this to show you that Wireshark can be used to do all of the attacks that we did before, plus much more, because basically it can capture anything that flows through our device. So any request sent or received to or from the target computers will be flowing through our interface, and then Wireshark will be capturing anything, regardless of whether it thinks it's important or not, it's gonna capture everything. So it's a really, really handy and useful tool.